Hey everyone, welcome to day three of building an image classifier uh, for our app development class. Um, at this point, you have collected a bunch of images and you have trained an image classifier using a CreateML tool um, in Xcode, either in a playground or using the CreateML tool uh, that is in the developer tools um, available in Xcode. And so uh, what we want to talk about today is that third stage of uh, machine learning. This is the cycle that we talked about last time. We have collecting data, which is what you did on day one. We have training your classifier, which is what you did last time. And today, we're going to do a little bit of evaluating of your model. So we'll talk about how you go through that process. Now, to uh, introduce this concept of evaluating, I want you to think about your experience as a student. Okay, Whenever you take a test, uh, you've taken a test, you always ask yourself, how did it go? Uh, it might be immediately after taking the test and saying, how well did you do? But a little bit further on, once you've taken that test, you think about some bigger, pic uh, bigger picture questions about uh, how you did. Usually that happens when you've gotten the test back. Um, and so some questions you might ask is, what did you have correct? What did you get right? Uh, what did you get right, but it was an accident? Um, what did you get, get right maybe for the wrong reason? So you answered a question correctly, but the reason you answered it was totally off. That's a common thing. Um, it's also important to think about what you got wrong. What did you get wrong? Uh, what was the reason you got it wrong? Did you have the right idea, but maybe if it was a math test, you made a calculation error, or maybe for a, a science test, you had it wrong and you had a concept that was wrong. So something was uh, there was a reason you got it wrong, and, and trying to identify what that reason is is really important as a student. And so the other thing that you can think about after taking a test um, or getting an assessment back is thinking about what additional work you need to do in order to improve. Now the reason I bring all of these things up is that the same things that matter uh, for a student trying to improve is what you can do to improve an image classifier or any trained um, uh, machine learning algorithm. You ask these same questions during the evaluate step to try to think about what your next steps are. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how you go about that. Um, I do want to talk about one little thing that uh, I kind of glossed over before and that is the idea that uh, there's this thing built into create ML which is that uh, you have this little checkbox that you can see over here. These, uh, these options are ways that CreateML can actually take your test data and expand your data set quite a bit. To say, um, this is the data that you brought in, but you could make it so that uh, this image that you've imported, you could rotate it, you could make it blurry, you could maybe make it brighter or uh, fade it a little bit. And so uh, the idea behind this is it makes the image classifier that much more uh, strong and consistent, robust. Um, if I have a remote control, um, if I am close to the camera, it's still a remote control. If I'm far from the, remote, from the camera, it's remote control. I can rotate it. I can flip it like this. I can maybe make it overly blurry and it gets some of those buttons, right? So all of these uh, these things, it's still a remote control. And so these functions make it even better when you are training your machine learning algorithm to um, uh, kind of multiply your data set and make it even stronger. Even if you have all of these different iterations of croissants and eggs and things, and you've seen I've tried to rotate them and change the, the brightness and the contrast, it still corresponds to the breakfast category. So it's just something that's built in. All right, uh, so let's talk about um, the uh, Xcode, and let's talk a little bit about how this works. So um, I have a couple models that I've used. One model uh, that you saw last time was the model that took nine seconds to train. So that's this one. I also have this other one where I had a bunch of these actually checked and training for this data set when I had all of these augmented data sec uh, uh, options selected, it actually took 50 minutes, 56 seconds. 
So it took, takes a long time to do that, but again, it improves the quality of your data. Um, that by itself, that said, um, there are still things that you can do beyond just kind of trying to, to improve the robustness that can make your image classifier that much stronger. So let's talk about it. Um, there's this really neat option where I have gone into, I've gone into the classifier right here and um, I have a set of data and it will actually tell you, um, based on that data, it will tell you what it thinks a given piece of data is. So let's drag in a breakfast picture and it says with 100% confidence that that is breakfast. That's great. This, 100% confidence, that's breakfast. Now you might say this is really good, but notice that I am taking this from the training data. Your image classifier should get everything right from the training data. We'll also take a look at, the, at my testing data. So let's drag a few things in here. Um, and let me make it so you can actually see the images. Um, so you can see a couple of things here. Let's drag this one in. Notice here that it has 95% confidence that this is breakfast, okay, which is a good thing. Um, it classified that as breakfast. But notice that it also says 5% confidence that it's lunch. It thinks it's possible that this is lunch. Part of the reason I think this one is being classified as lunch is because it has, um, it has bread in it. And I want to show you why I think that. So if I go to the lunch, I look at all of my tests, every single one of my, my lunch pictures, if I drag those in, it, it sees that bread, like I think there's a, there's a lot of bread in my lunch examples. And so it classifies those bread ones as uh, being lunch. And so this is an example of my classifier being uh, perhaps capturing some important elements, but possibly getting some of incorrect ones as well. My classifier is saying, if there is bread, it is likely to be lunch. And that's why when we look at this example of breakfast, it thinks that might be lunch. I want to show you another testing example from breakfast just to show you um, another element of this, which I think is interesting. So I'm going to drag this one in. So it has 99% confidence that this is uh, breakfast. You know, it's right. However, those are pancakes. Those are pancakes. And it's considering these, I think that it's considering this to be breakfast because it's seeing that big yellow fluffy mass here. And it might think that if in the image it finds something big, yellow, fluffy, that it must be breakfast because it must be eggs. So this is an example of something that my classifier had correct, but possibly for the wrong reason. And so one move I could make from here is to maybe get some more pancakes in my training set to be able to show that pancakes are definitely breakfast. And then maybe it would consider this to be a breakfast for sure. Uh, so let's see a couple other examples from my testing set. Um, again, you get a lot more out of the testing set and trying out your data on the testing set than you do with the training. So make sure you're using that. Uh, let's drag in some pasta, 100% confidence on that, 100% confidence on that one. So dinner, it's doing a really good job of evaluating these. Um, so what I did was I actually collected some other data and I called it additional photos, and so I just went to Google and grabbed a few other things. Uh, let's bring in a pizza. Pizza is, I mean, cold pizza is good for breakfast, agreed, but this classified breakfast as, uh, this classified pizza as breakfast. Again, probably because it sees that, that yellow part and it thinks it's eggs, and it says, if there's a whole bunch of yellow in the image, that must be eggs, which means breakfast. Um, dinner, 2% confidence. Maybe it sees that red and is thinking, ooh, tomato sauce. All of your training examples for dinner had tomato sauce in them, so it thinks that this is uh, dinner. Uh, some other things. So another egg picture. Okay, nothing interesting there. This one here. Okay, that is breakfast. It knows that that's breakfast. There's some fruit. Like, I've included some, some very different images in this set. How about this one? Okay, this is a picture of salmon, uh, salmon and vegetables. This time, it thinks that it's breakfast, but I know, looking at this example, that that's actually dinner. 
So this is just as when you are a student, you get a lot of information from the wrong answers, almost more information from the wrong answers than what you get from the right. So it's a really good idea to kind of push your image classifier, test it, see what the limits are of what it can do, because that's really going to give you information about um, how your how your classifier is working. Um, a waffle, somehow, I have not shown a waffle in my training set, but it somehow knows that this is breakfast. And so we can ask it, why is it thinking this is breakfast? What are the elements of this, what are the features in this image that suggest to the image classifier that this is breakfast? So anyways, I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of what I mean by evaluating your classifier. Um, Okay, uh, so some suggestions. You want to think about what was classified by the classifier correctly, what was classified correctly but for the wrong reason, and what was classified incorrectly. And think about those incorrect answers and really stretch that out uh, to try to understand what it is your classifier is doing. Um, in uh, machine learning, there's a concept of something called a confusion matrix. And a confusion matrix tells you, it's, it's not exactly like this, but it's similar. Um, it tells you how many did you have correct, how many did you have incorrect, but it also talks about how many, uh, it, it also talks about the idea of how many did you get wrong for the right reason, how many did you get right for the wrong reason. How many get, did you get right for the right reason? How many did you get right for the uh, wrong for the right reason? So it basically says, how well is your classifier um, working in all four of these? And so this is an, a useful way to organize how you evaluate your model as you uh, think about what you might do to improve it for the future. So here's what I want you to do today. Um, gather a, a little bit more test data perhaps. You could go to a different data source and get some more pictures to test. Um, use your testing data the same way that I did in uh, Create ML um, to think what is being classified correctly, what, is, um, what features do you think your uh, classifier is using in order to define each of the different elements. Um, so in my example for breakfast, I think that my classifier sees eggs as being an indicator that a picture is showing breakfast. And bread, my classifier uses to indicate uh, lunch. And I think uh, that that red color of the tomato sauce that appeared in many of my training images for dinner, that is what I think it might be using for, uh, for dinner. And so as you collect additional data, you might think about coming up with, with images that uh, test for those theories, like test those theories and find evidence that you could use to see if you are correct. You also want to think about what's being classified incorrectly. Um, what features is the classifier grabbing onto in order to do things incorrectly? And then I want you to think about uh, what you could improve in your training data to better identify the categories. Um, and so I want you to think about all these things. Uh, you can make notes on them, write them down, and show the way I did some of the, uh, some of the ways that your classifier is classifying your, your images, possibly your additional ones. And I want you to record a video on Flipgrid where you talk about some of these issues, you answer some of these questions. And uh, the last thing that I want you to do is try to improve your image set so that uh, in the future, it just does a better job of classifying images in your three categories. All right. So that's it. Um, that's it for this week. Good luck. Have fun.